It is a widely known fact that between the years of 1920 and 1933, it was illegal to sell, manufacture, and transport alcohol in the United States, a time known as the Prohibition Era. In a city like Chicago, where you'll be hard-pressed to walk a busy street for more than a couple blocks and not run into a bar, this is pretty difficult to imagine. The history of Chicago abounds with interesting stories of celebrities, mob bosses, and of course, crime. That's why it comes as no surprise that many find it to be one of the most infamous and interesting American cities in terms of prohibition history. Some may be surprised to hear that there are bars all over the city in business today that were around over 90 years ago during Prohibition. Let's take a look. 495 North Milwaukee Avenue, near west side of Chicago. At the triangular intersection of Grand, Halstead, and Milwaukee is Emmett's Irish Pub. Originally named O'Sullivan's when it opened as a saloon in 1934, the year after Prohibition came to an end, the building was used as a bank where Chicago mobsters kept their money in safety deposit boxes throughout Prohibition. According to the Emmett's Irish Pub website, the site also existed as a hideout for mobsters during the time when they were in danger of being busted by Chicago police. Allegedly, there were tunnels dug underneath the floors that led to different buildings around the neighborhoods. These tunnels served as an escape route for members of the Mafia. The bars had a few different owners since it first opened in the 30s, but the name was changed to Amit's Irish Pub when it was purchased in 1996. Televisions line the walls today, making it a popular stop for patrons, but you can still get a sense of the history behind the building as many of the original features remain. Emmett's has been used as a site to shoot scenes for multiple different films, including Ocean's Eleven, and has even been used for Playboy photo shoots. 658 West Belden Avenue, Lincoln Park John Barleycorn, a well-known Chicago bar which has since expanded to two additional locations, operated as a speakeasy during Prohibition. According to the Barleycorn website, the saloon appeared from the outside to be closed during Prohibition as it was legally required to be. However, the Chinese laundry located on the back end of the dining room served as a front for illegal liquor to be transported to the basement of the bar. Patrons could inconspicuously enter Barleycorns through the Chinese laundry front. Inside, customers could indulge in a beer or other types of liquor. It is a known fact that John Dillinger, the notorious American bank robber, frequented barley, barley corn. In fact, Dillinger died when he was shot by FBI agents outside the Biograph Theater, not even a 10 minute walk from the original barley corn location. There have been other pubs in the barley corn location since Prohibition, but it was purchased in the 1960s by a new owner who returned it to its original name. Barley corn is still popular today. However, as a local franchise, the decor is no longer reminiscent of its prohibition era roots. 17 West Adams Street, The Loop One prohibition era bar did the unthinkable, actually abided by the new laws and still stayed afloat during the prohibition era. It is the Berghoff, known as Chicago's oldest restaurant, the Berghoff Cafe originally opened in 1898. According to the Berghoff website, it successfully sold owner Herman Berghoff's Berghoff Dortmunder beer, as well as his whiskey, up until 1920 when Prohibition began. Instead of ignoring the new laws, as many bar owners did, Berghoff created the famous Berghoff root beer, still popular today, and sold other soda drinks as well. The cafe became a restaurant that still exists in Chicago's Loop area and is in fact still run by the Berghoff family. The Berghoff was issued the first liquor license in Chicago when Prohibition came to an end in 1933 and to this day still holds the number one liquor license in the city. 14 West Elm Street, near North Side. The Hang Up, known today for being a two-floor dance bar, complete with two DJs and masses of 20-somethings, holds a small part of Prohibition history to its name. The bar's downstairs operated as a speakeasy during Prohibition, and legend has it that it is haunted by the ghost of a woman who was murdered there during that time. There aren't many known details about the murder, but allegedly her ghost still lurks in the downstairs portion of the bar. 
She's been known to pull pranks like flooding the women's bathroom and opening keg taps. Ghosts and ghouls aside, frequenters of the bar today would likely fi find it difficult to believe that the popular modern spot once served as an interesting aspect of Chicago's prohibition history. 4802 North Broadway Street, Uptown. The Green Mill was originally called Pop Morse's Roadhouse when it opened in Chicago in 1907, but it wasn't long before it was bought out by new owners and transformed into the lively Green Mill Gardens, where it wasn't uncommon to see performances by American icons like Sophie Tucker and Eddie Cantor. In the 1920s, Jack McGurn, notoriously known as Machine Gun Jack McGurn, one of Al Capone's henchmen, became a co-owner of the lounge. According to the Green Mills website, he was given 25% ownership because the manager at the time wanted McGurn to convince Joe E. Lewis not to move his comedy act to a different Chicago club. McGurn attempted to persuade Lewis by cutting off his tongue and slitting his throat. Years later, when Frank Sinatra portrayed Lewis in a film, he visited the lounge to check out the site of this gruesome knifing. The Green Mill is known for being one of Capone's favorite hangouts, and he was known to consistently sit in the same booth. Legend has it, underneath the Green Mill lies some of Capone's hideout tunnels. The Green Mill is still considered one of Chicago's best jazz clubs. Chicago has a lot to offer when it comes to the city's rich history, but Prohibition era is one of its claims to fame. Check out the map on the screen to see many more locations where Prohibition bars still exist. Exploring the interesting parts of these five Chicago bars has only been a taste of what is truly a city full of historical landmarks.